Hey guys, today I have an InfoSec project for you. In simple words, it's just hacking. But professional, they call it information security. I'm really interested in the portion of InfoSec that allows me to get access to networks. Once you get physical access to a network, you can do many things. I heard about people use drones to do hacking. So I went to the DJI store because I only have experience with the small drones. So I want to take a look. Oh my goodness, that thing sounds like a lot more. One, I can't afford it. Second, that's much, much too loud for pen testing, I think. I decided to use my DJI Spark because I happen to have it and it's quiet. So I needed to figure out a way to drop a payload from it. I did my projects in my spare time, a couple of minutes here and there, so I don't have a good video. But I think all the parts uh, because I think my uh, thinking process is very funny and I want to show you uh, step by step how I think about it. So this is my idea. Like most Chinese, I don't own a clothes dryer. I just put them on the balcony on a clothesline. And sometimes when the wind blows very hard, it will walk back and forth and blow my clothes off. That's where my uh, original idea comes from. I was expecting that if I could uh, use a hook to uh, put it on my drone so that I can rock it back and forth and the payload will drop. So I went to Tinkercad and make some models and then I 3D printed. Let me show you. So this one is the first prototype. Uh, there are two hooks on each side in different angles. I was thinking maybe this one, if this one doesn't work, maybe the other one will work from this side. So I just need to attach the chopstick on and demonstrate it uh, to show you guys. And like this, I just put the payload in the middle and I would fly it up in the sky, try to work it, walk it back and forth. Sometimes if I, I'm lucky, it falls off. But there are so many times... And then I would practice to fly it up to the sky and rock it back and forth again, back and forth again. So, and it doesn't drop to the look, uh, it doesn't deliver the payload to my target. Like I, I, sometimes it's not very reliable. And every time, and every time when I try to, you know, land the payload, it would just uh, land on the ground. I know the answer is obvious why, but the whole time I was just trying to rock it back and forth in the sky and I will just pick it up and then put it on again and set it right back to the precision. But uh, now I know what you're thinking. I know, the, but I think everybody has that moment. Looking back at it, I was just like, um, I get caught up in one way and I didn't know the answer. The problem is the solution. So this is the rough one I started with. It's too tight. Um, it's the, I, I printed this for the, I don't know what you call this. Uh, the plastic part of it is a wing, a, a, an arm, let's just call it an arm. So, and then I got to the other one. I'm not going to put it on because uh, I might left some, uh, I might scrape uh, parts of the arm. The last one I finally got it right, like this, and uh, and then I uh, I printed the uh, other parts. I printed the other parts, but you know, like 
uh, most of my uh, process, I have to print tons of them. You see the box, I just keep printing and adjusting and see if it fits. So I printed two parts with adjustable holes so I can uh, figure out where I put the uh, middle part uh, to for the payload. And I got to the final part. So this is the final version. The other legs, I just duplicate the first one. So it flies like this. It drop, and then I take off again. And uh, I can put any payloads under 100 gram, like ESP8266. ESP32 and Raspberry Pi Zero as long as it's under 100 gram uh, and within 2 kilometers you can drop it anywhere you can drop it nearby the window, on the roof or on a port, um, movable target like on the train This is a ESP8266 and uh, I've got a bunch of uh, battery connectors here. I'm going to solder the battery connector to the ESP8266 and you can just run the uh, ESP8266 off a 9V battery. I have a couple here. So I've got three batteries here. Um, I use that to uh, fry. Uh, I use one to practice before, so I gotta test if they are running out. So, um, let me use my multimeter. It's a little bit messy here because I have a couple of projects, so. So this one is 9.6 volt, this one is fine, and uh, this one. This one is that. This one also 9.6 volt. So we got two as usual. And then Let's attach the uh, battery connector to the 9 volt battery. And this is the uh, payload case I printed out. So now first and then also voila so I got two payloads
Taiko Expectory, one of the biggest maker spaces in Shenzhen. But I call it the faker, faker spaces because they don't publish anything, they don't make anything. Yes, they got tools, but uh, they just let them sit there and getting dusty and nobody use it. So they're fake, they don't make anything, but they don't like me because I'm the real deal and they only hire foreigners to pay them to say they're the wheel maker spaces. Those money could go to kids' educations, you know. The Shenzhen government is great, they give them tons of funding, but they're not using it in the right way. It's like in the interview, they have fake fruit stands, but in Shenzhen we have fake maker spaces. So I decided to play a little trick on them. The patch of tenon is pretty directional, so I can use it to draw a line for the film. I have a ESP A266 running the Beacon Spam. I'm going to drop it on everyone. 